6, verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. That strength which His boundless might provides. And put on the whole armor of God. The armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies. That you might be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you might be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, you are to stand firmly in your place. Stand, therefore, <laughs> holding your own. So the Bible tells us over and over and over that we need to resist the devil, stand against the devil, bind the strong man. But the interesting thing is, is that you cannot do that if you don't also at the same time remain spiritually seated by being in the rest of God. Now see, when we're talking about the things we're talking about tonight, we're not talking about physically laying and physically sitting and physically standing and physically walking and physically running, we're talking about spiritually. How many of you want to run spiritually? Because you see, obviously, when you run, you get where you're going much faster. And I believe that I've come to a point, and many of you are, where I'm running my race now. And things are progressing much faster. And to be honest with you, life is much, much easier than it was when I was laying down all the time, upset about something. I mean, life doesn't even begin to get good until you learn how to enter the rest of God, until you learn that, that spiritually, legally, God has bought you a seat with the blood of Jesus in Him. And you can be seated, and please notice that Jesus is seated waiting for the, His enemies to be made a footstool for His feet. To stand against the enemy means to resist him and to not let him have the victory. But you can't do that if there's not a part of you that's still spiritually seated. Let me tell you something. You do not have to put up with the devil's junk. The Bible says, bind the strong man. And whatever you bind is bound, and whatever you loose is loose. It says, resist the devil, and he will flee. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and I've given you mental, physical power and authority over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall by any means harm you. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. God never intended us to be weak and wimpy and for everything to defeat us. How many of you have spent enough years of your life, wasted enough years of your life, you've wasted enough days feeling sorry for yourself, being upset because you didn't get it the way you wanted it, worrying, being angry, being confused, being jealous. Would you make a decision tonight that that's the end of it, that you're not wasting any more of your time doing that? I'm done with that. I'm cutting that off. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to still feel like it. But you don't even entertain those thoughts because you know that you've already been around that mountain long enough. And you don't want to be the guy who lays by the pool 38 years and does nothing with his life but sit there and feel sorry for himself because nobody's doing anything for him. Let me tell you something. You may have some times in your life when some people do some stuff for you, but you may have a lot of times where nobody's doing anything for you. You may have times where people that you do things for appreciate you but you may have a whole lot of times when you're just doing what you're doing under the Lord and nobody is appreciating you. And if our hearts are right, then we're going to keep doing what we do because it's what God has asked us to do and we expect our reward from Him and we're not going to get blown out of the game because we're not getting the schmoozing from the people that we want. Make your mind up that you're going to run your race and you're going to run it to win and you're the one that's going to end up with the prize. Amen? And you are going to have to deal with the devil. No matter how much you wish he'd leave you alone, he won't. And like I said this morning, if he's not bothering you, then you're probably not bothering him. But you see, the truth of the matter is, is I used to get all upset every time the devil bothered me. 
And now it doesn't bother me all that much because I already know who's going to win in the end. In case you've never done it, go read the end of the book. It's kind of like, you know, reading a good novel and you can't hardly wait to see how it finishes. Well, in the end, we win. All those who hang in there with God and remain steadfast and refuse to give up. That's really all the Bible's asking me to do is refuse to give up. I will not give up. I may not do it all right, but I'm going to stay in the game. I may hit some home runs. I may strike out a few times, but I'm going to stay in the game. My testimony is, I'm still here. That's it. I'm still here. 30 years later, after God called me, I'm still here. I didn't get everything as fast as I wanted it. It was harder than I thought it would be. But I'm still here. And you know what? If that's the testimony you have, that's still a good testimony that you're still here. You have authority over the devil. Don't let him run your life. Now, after you stand, then you can finally begin to walk. It's amazing how many times the Bible talks about walking. Walking with God, walking in love, walking in faith, walking the same way he walked, not walking in the flesh. And that was just a few that I pulled out. Walking your walk. You see, a lot of people are trying to run the race. They haven't learned how to sit. A lot of people are trying to run the race. They haven't learned how to walk. I was one of those people. I was trying to run my big ministry race, and God had to challenge me and say, you have not learned how to walk in love yet. You're trying to run a race and have a big ministry and fulfill what you believe is the call on your life, but you can't do that if you don't know how to walk the way he walked and if you're not walking in love. Well, I had to back off and just forget about my ministry. Growing up, I stayed in ministry and I continued to do my teaching. And the interesting thing was, was the more I paid attention to my walk, the more the ministry grew. The more I tried to make it grow, while I wasn't paying attention to some of the other things I need to pay attention to, there was no progress at all. And I think, to be honest, a lot of times we get too interested in things we don't need to be interested in, and we're not interested enough in the things we ought to be interested in. Can I just challenge you and tell you, if you don't ever study love, then you need to stop studying some of the other stuff you're studying, and you need to study walking in love. Now, maybe you're the kind of person you're real interested in end-time prophecy. Well, that's okay, you know. But I don't think you need to get overboard in that kind of stuff, because, I mean, who really knows how it's all going to happen? Well, are we going to be here for the tribulation? Is it post-trib, pre-trib, pre -trib? what's going to happen? Who's the Antichrist? What's the number 666? You know what? I'm just going to be ready whenever he wants to come and get me. And, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying not to study end times, but, to, but in the process of all that, you've got to study something that's going to do you some good right now. You've got to study something that's going to make you the kind of person that Jesus wants you to be. I believe that we need to understand as much as we can about end times, but I think it's wrong when people study prosperity excessively or, or they spend all their time trying to get their healing. The Bible says that we need to walk in love. We need to walk the way that he walked. We need to walk in faith. We need to walk with God. We need to walk in his presence. How many of you are paying attention to your walk? Yeah, well, you know, you can't walk from a position of laying down either. So maybe God brought you here tonight for me to tell you to get up. <laughs> get up in your attitude. Let your conversation get up. <laughs> Let your thought life get up. Wake your hope up once again and decide that you're going to sit and you're going to stand and you're going to walk and then you can run your race. How many of you understand this tonight? You know where we're at. All right, now let's just talk about a few things that areas where I think we need to enter the rest of God because, to be honest, if you don't know how to stay in the rest of God, you really will never successfully do all the rest of this. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm preaching to you tonight and I'm working hard, but to tell you the truth, I'm in the rest of God. You know why? Because I'm not up here worrying about what you think about it. I'm not worrying about what I look like laying on the floor and kicking my feet or any of the rest of it because I'm not here trying to impress you. I'm trying to run my race, but I can only run my race if I stay in the rest of God. Do you understand that? 
I can't really help you if I don't stay in the rest of God because I, then I get into works of the flesh and God doesn't anoint works of the flesh. He only anoints it when we stay in his flow. So one of the things that you need to enter the rest concerning is what people think about you. Stop worrying about what everybody thinks of you and just say, you know what, God, I'm trusting you for favor and whoever you want me to be in relationship with, you can give me a divine connection. Divine connection. Hook me up, Jesus. <laughs> Amen? With the right people. Paul said in Galatians 1.10, if I was trying to be popular with people, I would not right now be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you what? If you have an excessive desire to be popular with people, you will never run your race. Now, we all need this, but I know there's a lot of young people here tonight and Teenagers especially get into this. Sometimes, as a young person, if you're not careful, you can let peer pressure totally turn the course of your destiny. And you want to be very careful. You don't want to start taking drugs just because somebody wants you to and says, well, if you don't do this, then you're not going to be in our group. Say, well, then good. I don't need to be in your group because I'm not destroying my life for you. I won't even know where you're at five years from now when I'm destroyed. Don't lay down for anybody. Stay in the race and run to win. I wrote a book called Approval Addiction. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the better books that I have because I am telling you what, we just don't even begin to realize how many decisions we make based on what somebody else is going to think about it. We really can get easily addicted to people approving of everything that we do. And what happens then is you, lo you lose your freedom and very often your destiny because we need to be led by the Holy Ghost, not controlled by people. <laughs> How many of you could really use entering the rest of God tonight concerning what people think about you? You're just overly concerned about that. I believe we need to enter God's rest concerning mistakes of the past. You can't do anything about your past. So you might as well leave it with God and say, if you can't take care of it, I certainly can't. And I'm not going to let my past destroy my future. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that tomorrow, but let me just remind you that your past only has as much power over you as you give it. Thanks for listening to today's message.